One of the biggest benefits of owning property in an IRA or a 401k is there's no taxes on the rents and there's no capital gains when you sell. Let me break that down for you. There are some specific benefits to owning property inside a retirement account that don't exist anywhere else. A lot of people understand that you can own property in your retirement account, but they don't understand how powerful the benefit is. Not only can you own property in your IRA or your 401k, meaning your IRA, 401k, go on the title and own the property, but the benefit is that you now are either completely tax deferred or it's tax free. If you have a traditional, it's tax deferred, meaning it all grows without paying any taxes, but then when you take the money out, you pay the taxes. If you have a Roth, then it's completely tax-free growth and then tax-free distributions. And I had listened to a CPA a few years ago at a seminar and he was selling a tax prep package and he wanted people to spend $10,000 to buy his package. So he said to them, all of you should go and close out your 401ks and close out your IRAs and pay the taxes and pay the penalties because my tax package is so good that I'll make that up for you uh, in a few years. And like my head almost popped off my shoulders because I couldn't believe that that uh, CPA was giving such personally beneficial advice. Like, you know, I went up to him afterwards and I said, how could you teach that? And he's like, well, you know, if you own property inside a retirement account, you'd lose the tax benefits. I'm like, no, you idiot. The benefit is you don't pay taxes. That's the best benefit at all. I, you don't have to file a return. You don't claim it. There's no taxes at all. Who cares about depreciation or right expensing when, you, when there's just no tax? Now, uh, you know, obviously if you have a traditional IRA and you put a house in it, the rents grow tax-free. If you sell that property, there's no capital gain. But then when you take the money out, the distributions, you'll have to start paying. Um, but if you have a Roth uh, and, and you buy a property and sell it, that gain is, you don't claim it because now you, you pay taxes when you put the money in. So now all of the growth, any of the rents, any of the capital gains, you're good on forever. You're Gucci. <laughs> and then uh, and when you take the money out in retirement, you pay no taxes. And, and uh, that's why I'm amazed that people don't uh, uh, have Roths. So if you don't yet have a Roth, get one set up. And as you evolve in your uh, investing, make sure that you're buying property and taking advantage of what is really a gift from the government in terms of uh, wealth creation and wealth growth. If you've heard that you can buy property in a 401k or an IRA, but it's very risky, I'm here to explain it and change your mind. There was a recent study done of IRAs and 401ks. And they said, who are the top 1% IRAs that have billions of dollars in them? And those IRAs had two things in common. They had shares of ownership in businesses, so take example, Peter Thiel started PayPal. In 2000, he had like 2,000 bucks in his IRA. Uh, 20 years later, because he bought shares in his company, PayPal, inside the retirement account. So he had 5,000 bucks a year, 6,000 bucks a year. He bought shares of PayPal, his company, and put them in that retirement account. Uh, that's now, because of the growth of those shares, that's worth billions of dollars. Um, so that's one way that people grow them. The other way is they own property. Just as an example, my wife has contributed uh, $50,000 a year for the last eight years to her retirement account. Um, and so she's made $400,000 in contributions, but the portfolio from the growth is now worth over $2 million. And so she's made more money from the growth of the properties than she's made from the contributions that she's put in there. And, and, and it highlights the strategy that the wealthy use is they focus more on growth and poor people focus more on contributions. Uh, if you don't use a trustee, if you do things wrong, you could create a prohibited transaction. The tax benefit, the tax deferred growth could be disallowed, you could owe the taxes. So you always wanna make sure that you're working with a trustee uh, who, who reviews all of your transactions and signs off on them so that if you get audited, that trustee then is the one who has to kind of get in the middle and say, I approved everything they did. And so they're kind of like the fall guy in that situation. There are some 401ks and IRAs that are self-directed that don't use a trustee. They're called checkbook. And guess who the IRS loves to audit? It's those. And so you just want to make sure that you're working with the right group. And my personal advice from one investor to another is, is stay away from those checkbook controlled 
where you control the money and there's nobody looking over your shoulder. You need that and you want that even though you don't think you do.